My name is Rosemary Kaptana. My Inuit Naktun name is Kulak, and my nickname is uh, Tuktuaruk. I'm a Inuk. I was born in an igloo in the Prince of Wales Strait, which is part of the Northwest Passage. It is my hope that such a conversation starter as the Walrus Talks leads to a more meaningful relationship between all us Canadians. As Inuit, we share what we knew because that is our way for all humans to survive in our territory. That immense sense of sharing and adaptation is what drives Inuit. That is how we survive. This year marks two very significant events in our history. Canada is 150 years old, and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms turns 35 this year. It was enshrined 35 years ago. However, I see a lack of reflection of Inuit in the Canadian Constitution, 1982, outside of Section 35, which begins the existing Aboriginal and Treaty Rights of the Aboriginal Peoples of Canada are hereby, are hereby recognized and affirmed. In my analysis, this falls within the antiquated 15th century doctrine of discovery, also known as Terry Nalias. Why do I say this? When outsiders arrived in Canada, they did not find indigenous peoples in chaos, but in highly organized governance structures. That is our inherent right of self-government, which Inuit view as an aspect of the larger right at the international level, the right of self-determination. The Terranola's doctrine has been condemned by the United Nations as a piece of legal mythology. Will Canada do the same? Inuit desire a better Canada, a Canada that's inclusive and reflects the reality of Inuit by virtue of an explicit recognition in Canada's highest law, the Canadian Constitution, 1982, meaning our inherent right of self-government. Prime Minister Trudeau must finish what his father began and go beyond by making the negotiation table a level playing field in the human rights arena in Canada. What are the barriers outside of uncertainty and fear-mongering to our recognition? Take a leap of faith. Inform us of what the barriers to our recognition as a people are. Perhaps we might be able to remedy them, and perhaps we might be able to subside the fears of power sharing by our nation. Inuit have been here for thousands of years. These are the characteristics that define Inuit. Our language, our culture, our traditions, our values, our geography, and our history. But we are more than that. We also are members of the Canadian human family. We welcome the explorers and the traders, whalers, newcomers, and settlers to our home in the spirit of sharing on which the Inuit society is based upon. These were the people whom my grandmother said we had to help. My hope, my vision, is that one day this same sense of sharing will be reciprocated. We Inuit have a proven track record of nation building and have achieved recognition of the inherent right of self-government during the 1992 Charlottetown Constitutional Talks. It is my belief that Canada can never go back on its word and its position to do so would dishonor the Crown. The fundamental human rights of Inuit to self-government must be recognized and be constitutionally enshrined. The concept of sharing might well be adopted by Canada in its attitudes 
and its approaches to the Inuit. The North, as you may know, is not without its problems. We need a lasting and meaningful economy, food security, housing. There are some people in the territories in Nunavut and other places where 25 people live in one home. We need education, food security, and infrastructure for ports and other economic measures. Canada can do much more to meet the demands of these issues. Today, I take part in, as other Inuit, to celebrate Canada's birthday with all other Canadians. We love our homeland, and we love the rest of the country too. Not only can we be friends and compatriots, but we can also be partners, sovereign partners in a relationship that is based on love, recognition, and respect. I think the time has long passed. Thank you. Thank you.